In this video, I will be teaching you how to derive the equation of combinations. Now, this isn't necessarily uh, something that you have to know. I just believe that it can be very helpful if you do know it, and it can benefit you in the sense that you'll have a stronger understanding of permutations and combinations. And I'd like to start off by saying that this can be a slightly confusing topic, but if you take some time and try to internalize it, then eventually you'll be able to understand what's going on. So the first step to finding the equation for combinations is to derive the equation for permutations. And we'll do that initially by using our same old example of five people, A, B, C, D, and E, who have to sit in three chairs. And we wanna find all of the permutations or all of the possible ways in which they can be seated. Sorry, my voice is cracking a lot today for some reason. I should drink some water. Anyway, so in the first seat, there are five possible people who can sit A, B, C, D, and E. So there are five possibilities for this. Now for each of these five possibilities, there are four people who have not been seated yet. So there are four more possibilities for each of these five. And in our last spot, there are three more people who haven't been seated, so there are three more possibilities for each of these four. Therefore, the number of permutations is equal to five times four times three. So five times four times three. Now, what we, wanted to do, what we want to do with this is we want to express this in terms of factorials. So the immediate way that we see that we can make this in terms of factorials is by multiplying it times two and times one. So basically completing the isnad or the chain of this permutation. So how do we do that? Well, we divide this by two times one. Now, in order to derive our equation, we have to understand where we can get this two times this two times one from, or this, let's rewrite this as, two factorial. Well, if we extended it and said, hypothetically, that we had five chairs, then there would be two and one more possibilities for the ways that they can sit. And we can derive the number of extra spots left by n, or the total number of people, by subtracting r from n. So n is the total number of people and r is the total number of spots available. And if we subtract these two numbers, then we get the number of extra spots, which in this case is two, because five people, so five people minus three spots gives us two. So from this, we can derive that our equation for permutations or n pr, as I just noted, can be written as n factorial, where n is the number of objects or people, over n minus r factorial. So I just quickly ran over that, and if you want to look at this in more depth or more clearly, then you can look at my, equi or my video on permutations, in which I go over this. So anyway, let's box this off for now. And I'll, we'll revisit this later, but before we move on, I want to go over one more concept that we've already done. So, and that is when we have x objects, x objects to be arranged in x positions, then how many permutations do we have? Well, if you remember, we have, let's say, for a number of positions going on until x, we have x possibilities multiplied by x minus 1 possibilities times x minus 2 possibilities going down until we have only one possible or one possible person to be seated or object to be placed. And this is the equivalent of saying x factorial. So when we have x objects or x, x objects to be placed in x positions, there are x factorial permutations. And we can see that in this case where if we had five seats for five people, then there would have been five factorial possible permutations. Now, once again, let's box this, off, box this off and we will come back to this in a second. So the main difference between permutations and combinations is that in combinations, in combinations, 
order does not matter. And what this means is that, let's say in our previous example, if we have the people A, B, and C seated. So we have A, B, and C. And there are multiple permutations of this. We can have B, A, and C seated. So where person B is in seat one, person A is in seat two, and person C is in seat three. Or we can even have C, A, and B seated, where person C is in seat one, person A is in seat two, and person B is in seat three. Now, these are all different permutations. But once again, with combinations, the order in which the people are seated or, the, or, or in which our objects are placed does not matter. So for all we care, all three of these possible ways of being seated only refer to one or only refer to one possible combination. So once again, while A, B, C may be different, may be a different permutation from B, A, C, it's still the same combination because person A, person B, and person C are sitting over here. And over here as well, person A, person B, and person C are also seated, but just in a different order. So when we're differentiating between the equation of permutations, which we have over here, and the equation of combinations, we want to find a way to get rid of all of these extra or unnecessary iterations, where when we're calculating permutations, we're counting all of these different permutations, whereas if we were counting combinations, we would only want one of them, which is the combination in which we have person A, person B, and person C sitting, regardless of order. So how do we do this? Well, as I mentioned over here, when we have x objects to be placed in x positions, there are x factorial number of permutations. So therefore, if we want to have a, b, and c seated, while this is one possible combination, there will be three factorial permutations. So there will be three factorial different ways in which people A, B, and C can be arranged, or th there are three different orders in which they can sit. So this is equal to three times two or six. And what this means is that for this combination of people A, B, and C, there are six different possible permutations. And from this, we can derive that Let's rewrite our equation for permutations. We have n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So these are the total number of permutations. Now, for each combination, so for each combination, combination, there are, there are r factorial permutations. So as I just stated here, for the combination of people A, B, and C sitting, there are three factorial, where three is equal to R, so three is equal to our value of R, different permutations. Therefore, if we want to solve for, or if we want to solve for the number of combina combinations in terms of this equation, then we can divide this by r factorial. And I'd like you to, at this point, just let this kind of sink in, or if you don't understand it, just take a minute and think about it, and think about what I just said. Try to process this. It took me a while to get this as well on my first try. So, so we can further expand this using algebra. So. We have n factorial divided by n minus r factorial multiplied by 1 over r factorial. We can rewrite this as n factorial divided by 
Let's scroll down a bit or up. N minus R factorial multiplied by R factorial. And this over here is our equation for co uh, for combinations or N CR. And once again, this can be read as N choose R.